Hi there, Luke here with you and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to talk all about how you can do a roll tack. So a roll tack, strapless kite surfing, is a more advanced tack move but it's something that maybe you're already trying, maybe you're struggling with or maybe you're about to try it for the very first time. So in this video we're going to go through all the steps on how you can roll tack, exactly how it works and we'll go through a video assessment as well and I can show you some of the real small technicalities because what I found personally when I was learning to tack, learning to roll tack or duck tack some people call it is it, it was actually really difficult a out of all of the tricks that I've learned the tack was actually one of the most difficult or the most uh, repetitive I guess trying to get it over and over again falling 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 trying to get this move and so I'm going to try and break it down into some real small components so you can hopefully get out there and start mastering it a lot quicker than I did so a quick overview of how the roll tack actually works. A, a roll tack is a transition move, so you'll be heading in one direction, you're going to head back the other direction. As we're coming along on our heel side, we actually roll under the kite the same way that you would actually do a back roll. So your forward, if I'm heading in this direction, wind's at my back right now, my forward shoulder rolls up like that. At the same time, we'll just probably sheet out a little bit, you go around, body motion and you head back the other way. Now, if you're looking at that without a board, you'll see that that is essentially just a back roll transition. If you're on a twin tip, it's a back roll transition. But with the strapless board, we actually keep the board on the water. And hopefully, or you can keep one foot in contact with it all the time to control it or you can even lift up a little bit and land back on it again but really it's just a very small back roll nicely controlled with your bar so you don't lift up too much and at the same time we steer the board around so it can start by bringing the kite up it's going to head back the other direction just like a normal tra uh, just like a, a yeah a normal transition if you've done any other transitions so basically the kite's going to head over past 12. if you can think about it in that as we start to come into the, the tack, we start to move the kite up and really push against a so carve up wind as, as hard as you can. In order to carve up wind, typically you have to sheet out. So you carve right up wind, bring the, the, uh, the board with you still on the, on the ground. And at this point, start to look where you're gonna go and you actually dive the kite back down because you're leaving your front hand well, you, you, what was your backhand becomes your front hand and you dive the kite down into a power stroke. This is probably one of the key points about doing a duck tack is that that kite motion is one motion and you need to be thinking about doing the power stroke when you're back with power stroke like that and it pulls you back in the direction you want to go. Really, really key for doing a, a duck tack or a roll tack because otherwise you'll find that you fall or you get pulled over the front and we're going to go, we'll break it down now anyway, but that is an overview of how the duck tack or the roll tack works. Okay, so let's go through a couple of examples on the computer. I've loaded up a few examples of the roll tack. Uh, we'll just run through this one at full speed first. So you can see coming in with plenty of speed, carve right up wind, roll around, and then dive back in the other direction. So let's just slow this one down now and break it down into some components. So as you're coming in with speed, it allows you to sheet right out and drive right up wind. So you can see right there, the board is almost, we just talk about the board first and then we'll talk about the body and the, and, the, and the kite. So the board, I'm still attached to it, like my foot's only just coming off now, but the board's almost turned all the way around into the position that, um, to go back the other way. As you get behind, uh, sort of facing backwards or halfway through the roll, you can see in this example what I'm doing is actually taking both feet off the board sort of stops and then I'm putting both feet back on the board. At the same time, diving the kite down with that front hand and that, that power stroke is what pulls me out of it. But what I want to show you is in the next example, this one, trying to stay a little more in contact with the board. So same deal, carving up in really strong carve, trying to carve that board all the way around. But if we go back, you can see in this example, as carving around, my front foot is still attached to the deck for as long as it can be before I try and switch that, only just now, try and switch it out and put the other foot on, on the deck to, to continue. But what's, what's important to note really is that the board, you're really trying to carve the board as far around as you can so that you don't have to 
catch it and then drive the other way. I really like getting on that rail and trying to carve as far as you possibly can so now the nose of the board's already sort of in the direction that you want to go. If we, if we look at this example again, So now, in this next example, we've got Francis. So what I really like about Francis's tack is you can see that, if we, go, if we pause and go through this one, if you see, Francis is really um, committing to the, to the shoulder. So she, she drops her arm right back to get that rail and to get that roll underneath the bar. And right here, very good on the feet as well. So keeping that foot engaged, which helps to, to not lose control of the board halfway through. And then the rest of it's exactly the same, where you're basically sheeting out, going through it, and then sheeting back in to power stroke the other way. Okay, so here's a fully zoomed out example. And in this example, you can see the kite as well. So we run through it one time, and the kite straight back down and power strokes the other way. So you can see, starting to commit uh, to the rail, so starting to carve up wind, the kite's already starting to come over your head. So by the time the board is pointing up wind now, you can see the kite's already starting to move slowly back to the other direction and pull, start to pull down. I know it's hard to see on the, on the GoPro here, but start to pull down with that front hand and stroke the kite all the way down really strongly. This is re very, really important. Even if you don't stick on the board, even if you lose contact with the, with the board with your feet or you're going to fall, just commit to having that power stroke come down with that hand because what that will do is it will get you in the rhythm of being able to get on the board so then even if you have to make a small adjustment with your feet, you can put your feet on the board and quickly the power, you know the power stroke is going to be there, anticipate that and you can, and you can drive off like a, like a water start. If you don't do the power stroke every time then you'll find that it gets it's really frustrating actually learning. So this one is headed the other direction and I want to show a couple of things with this one. So that's uh, at full speed, and if we just go through it again, what you might notice is right here, I've actually got both of my hands on the bar instead of one hand, and you can see that it actually is, a, is quite a lot more awkward. So by having both hands on the bar, uh, one of the problems is that it, it makes you tense up through the shoulders here, and, and it makes it a lot uh, less comfortable. And as you can see, we're tilting the bar down with our front hand anyway, so there's no need to have this back hand on the bar. So I just wanted to show that example because I think that if you can do it one-handed, it's going to be a lot more comfortable as, as, you're, uh, as you're learning it. So just one more example here with the, with the hand. One hand off the bar, you don't need your front hand on the bar, carve up wind and then drive down with that same hand, put your other hand on the bar and catch the kite. So one more example here, just going slowly through it. Nice amount of speed is going to make it easy. Start to carve up wind, sheet out. And then as you're coming around, you, you're going to switch your feet here. And at the same time, you can sheet in, which is going to help hold you up and dive the kite the other way. Now, one point I wanted to show about this example, if we just go back, this example, you can see my back hits the water, so this is not great technique. Uh, you can see I'm fully sheeted in, so maybe the wind's a little light, which means I needed to dive the kite a bit harder in order to counteract the fact that it was a bit lighter there. But I just wanted to show you the difference, because if I can just show you one of the tips, so if we just come back, if we just show you one of the tips for actually that, that helped me land this for the first time, was that uh, when I'm coming in, so if I'm heading this way, when I'm coming in and I carve up, I had to think about transferring my weight from one foot to the other foot. So even though it doesn't really look like it, I'll just show you an example, but even though it doesn't really look like it, I had to focus on as I'm carving, then you actually, you, 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 you need to transfer your weight in your shoulders. So I had to think, okay, move my, move my body weight over the front of my, over my legs. So let me show you. So with this one, carving very aggressively, and you can see how laid back I am towards the camera there, and still very laid back. So this leg, you can see my body posture, it's right over the tail, and that, that puts a lot more pressure on the kite. So it, maybe it was light, or maybe I just leaned back too much, and that's what made me drop into the water. But if we look at this next example, and that power stroke there helped me get back up, so that's another reason to always 
complete it. So with this example, you can see I'm more centered and I stay over the top of the board. So if we just break this one down, I'll show you exactly what I, the trick I had to tell myself. So sheet it out nicely, carve upwind, and then right here, you can see I'm still leaning back at this point. You're on the tail to make that carve happen. But right here, what I'm telling myself is to put this shoulder over this leg over the front of the board. So as I'm rolling around, you can see, and I'll switch the feet, you put the, the foot down there, and this shoulder I try to drive down a, a little more. Even though you still are on the back foot, you can see your back foot will still be more bent than your front foot because you're doing a water start. This sort of angle really helped me land it to make sure that I was on top of the board and that I could, I could basically ride out of it. So look, that's a few tips for the roll tack. Hopefully that helps you. Hopefully the, the video demonstration helps a little bit as we talk through it. If you've got any more questions, let me know. It's a, it feels really smooth once you get it. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, and you can do it by losing, like by taking your feet off or keeping trying to keep one foot on and replace it. The, I think the most important takeaways for me was really that kite motion, making sure it's one continuous motion and commit to that power stroke no matter what. Trying to do it with one hand was really nice as well because then you, you, re, you remove the temptation to sort of clutch in with both hands and have the kite at 12. Like you can see, that was a bit awkward in that other example of mine. And I think that um, for me, it was and even still today, it's telling myself, okay, I'm coming around, I'm going to have to transfer my weight to my other foot that's going to be in the, in the middle of the board or in the, my front foot, my new front foot. So I'm on my back foot, but it's going to switch and I have to you know, move to the front foot there to, um, to be able to stand on top of the board more and ride out of it. That's it. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Luke here, Flix Kite Surfing, and we'll see you in the next one.